What's up, everybody? It's the Big Dog Podcast, and I'm Josh Wilson. I got J Mac. What up? What up? What's going on, Jonathan? Nothing much. It's Christmas week. Yeah. Merry Christmas, brother. Merry Christmas to you as well. Thank you for the gift. No problem. Yeah, that was sweet. I walk into the studio to record this morning, and there's a gift sitting right here in my spot. It's like, am I supposed to open this? I said, yeah, check it out. So I open it up, and it is a make your own whiskey kit with all kinds of stuff. Yep. A lot of different profiles, options. all kinds of options. So we'll see how badly I screw this up. I'm, <laughs> I would do my best. We're going to see how it goes. We're going to check it out. Hopefully you end up with a moonshine still in your backyard. <laughs> I, I mean, Hey, I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't question it. Um, but yeah, so we're rolling in the Christmas week. I am um, back in town. This will be the first full week that I've been in town for last six seven weeks i've been traveling every single week we've been on the the team jw tour is what we're calling it uh we've been traveling around katie went with me on on most of these trips um just meeting up with our trainers across the country and spending time with them and celebrating you know what's been a really for us a historic and record-breaking you know 2021 um it's so funny when we when i think about this time last year, and I was goal setting um, for 2021, what our objectives were and what we wanted to accomplish. We've met those and surpassed those. But one thing that happened that was not really on my radar coming into this year was uh, to expand how we expanded with off-leash canine training. And, you know, we went from four locations to nine. We had five this year. That's insane. No wonder I'm tired. No wonder the team is tired. Yeah, it makes sense. We've been we've been grinding. But um, and even during that process, I didn't really think about it so much outside of getting everybody plugged in and then and, and ready to roll and make sure that we could support them. But then when I was planning out the last month and a half and I'm making these trips around the country, holy smokes, like we got a lot of places to see and do. And I didn't even get out to Des Moines. We didn't even get out there. Wait, why weren't so, you able to make it out there? Well, she was traveling. Um, the trainer who's out there, different things are going on. We were going to try to bring her and include her in the one in in Texas, but schedule wise, it just didn't work out, and that's where we're at. So, no good pro um, basketball in Iowa either, and no good pro basketball. There was kind of a theme to our um, to our visits. Each each spot that we went into, it worked out great. We uh, took the team to pro basketball game, so. We went out to Milwaukee. We got to see the Bucks Lakers in November. That was cool. Except for LeBron was hurt. So, you know, I missed out on an opportunity to to see him. Um, Wait, did you get to see him in Dallas? No, 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 no. Nope. Because we were in San Antonio. We didn't go to the uh, game in Dallas. Okay. We were in San Antonio. Hold on real quick, Jonathan. Jonathan, tell about New York real quick. This is Logan calling me, and he doesn't normally call me. So let me just make sure he's okay. So what up, guys? Um, <laughs> Sorry, buddy. I was just in New York uh, doing like A&R meetings. That's artist and research uh, meetings with different people who were looking at my music. Uh, I was in some studio sessions and I got to shoot a music video in Chinatown in New York. It was a lot of fun. Hold on. You did a music video? You did a music video? Yeah. Come on. Yeah, was, were you? Uh, yeah. Okay. I was up there. Uh shooting in bloody bend is what it's called Jeez, officially doyer street but it's the site if anyone wants to look it up back in like 1905 i believe uh four of the chinese gangs of new york got into like a huge like gang warfare there okay and now it's a tourist destination and they got like a bunch of tables and stuff set up but it still looks insanely menacing when, well i mean it just sounds menacing yeah. um it, sorry logan's killing me yeah we're good so what everything's he's logan's got my truck all right mm -hmm. so we had our christmas party last night for virginia and my truck is at the location and so devin i rode with devin home so i'm ready to roll this morning and go to work i take logan's truck so they took logan to get my truck so he's asking me questions about my truck ah he doesn't, I mean, he's calling me i'm thinking something's wrong and nothing he just like do i need to put gas in it you want me to fill it up 
That's a good kid, right? Yeah, typical questions. Um, so you're in New York. You had some studio time. Yep. You had some meetings. Yep. And you recorded a video. Yep. When is this video going to come out? Uh, so I recorded like a whole separate, like we recorded like 11 songs. So now we have like another project on top of the one that we're like doing all of the marketing stuff for now. So it's kind of a, a whole task. Yeah. It's a, it's a lot of effort and work and all of the money that I earn, you know, here goes into that. And then it's music. So you don't see a return immediately. Man, but you're doing your thing though. Your music is getting out in different platforms in front of more people. I imagine all like these meetings, that's that's what this stuff is about, right? How to get your work in front of more people, how to get your work not just heard but seen. And that's why we have the videos, right? Yep. So it's the effort. Yeah, it's a lot of it's a lot of the effort. And I mean the personal stuff that has gone into it yeah. is huge because it's been like a lot of personal sacrifices, like not going to see certain people, not making different trips sure. just to be able to fund the music. That's cool. Yeah. It's awesome. And you got fun the dream. Yeah, for sure. Recently went from like 250 monthly listeners to like 2,000. So let's go. We're hanging out. Hell yeah, that that's big. Yeah, two, that's big time. 2,000 people listening to me talk about nonsense is pretty pretty cool. That's kind of how I feel about the podcast since we started. I look at like how many people have downloaded, and it's like thousands now. And I'm like, <laughs> why? Yeah, we recently <laughs> hit like. I appreciate what? y'all. Thank you. Uh, but it's it's funny to me. Yeah, that little 5,000 downloads notification was. Really yeah. Cool. I'm like, this is awesome. Are you kidding me right now? 5,000 people. Like, this is great. So really, really appreciate that. Shout out to to the the family, the fans, the friends. Mamu, thank you for keep hitting download. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Bumping those numbers up. Get us in front of people. Yeah, and everyone that watches on YouTube. Oh, yeah. That number is continuing to go up. People are digging it. That's good. Um, hey, YouTube. So, look, here's the thing. <laughs> With that being said, before I jump into some other stuff, it, if you guys, you know, take anything from this that's that's beneficial, you're like, oh, I got somebody who needs to hear this message, uh, something like that, you know, share it. Share the podcast. It doesn't matter what platform that you're listening to it on or if you're watching on YouTube. Everything has a, a share option and a link. And, you know, you don't got to go blast it all over social media. I mean, I'd love it if you did. But even if you just text it to a, a friend or family member, or a colleague, somebody who would benefit from a message in a particular episode, means the world to us. I mean, that would be great. Um, Yep. And we're definitely planning for the new year to have a lot of new things, new content coming, hopefully like some live podcasts, uh, more videos up on social. So yeah, it's going to be cool. It's really fun. We got fun stuff planned for 2022. Um, And that's kind of what I wanted to talk with you guys about today. You know, again, it's Christmas week. I'm really excited that Christmas falls on a Saturday this year, because typically when we go into Christmas week, we lose the whole week. You know, everyone's already checked out, gone, done, whatever. People are traveling and people have already started traveling. The kids are done with school here in Virginia. Friday was their last day. But, you know, I would encourage you guys, um, you know, my entrepreneurs out there, my, you know, self-employed, small business owners, the vast majority of people right now are letting their foot off the gas. They are relaxing. They are coming up with every reason uh, that they should be chilling out, you know, doing whatever and and not putting that, that effort in. Um, and historically I do kind of shut down the last couple of weeks of the year. Oh, I get um, it. I get it. You know, I, I, I like to say by the 15th of December, I want to be done. I've been saying that probably my entire life and I've never actually really done it. Um, do I give myself a, a little more flexibility? Sure. But it, it, it's, it's not done. And th- what I have found over the last several years in particular is that these last couple weeks of the year, and really December as a whole, it's separation season. You know, when everybody else is kind of dialing back, you know, we just, I just keep the, the gas to the floor. I mean, we're just rolling. You know, the, the sales team, I mean, they're grinding. They, they've got goals personally. We've got goals as an organization and, you know, we've hit most of our goals for the year. Most of our goals we've hit. We've got a couple that are so close, but you know, they're in there working and they're not working just to hit that goal. We want to see how much we can squeeze out of 2021 as possible. 
you know, and, and we're still interviewing because we're hiring across locations. Um, like I said, the last six weeks I've been on the road traveling and meeting with trainers and clients. And, you know, last week in Austin, great meeting with a, a, a new partner that we're going to be doing. I got some crazy exciting stuff to share in January um, about things that are going to be going down in Austin, you know, with off leash canine training and, and myself and the team there. But, you know, if I had taken the foot off the gas and just started chilling, a lot of these things, these opportunities probably wouldn't have come about because I would have just been living off of what we did this year, telling myself how good of a job we did and, and missing out. Oh, for sure. And you and I are definitely of the same mindset. Cause I, I truly believe that there's something, uh, inspiring about working when everyone else is kind of taking taking downtime and i had to experience mm-hmm. that like living in charlottesville working for the football team yeah. whenever they had a bowl game and decided to go at least six and six during <laughs> the right. year at least i would miss thanksgiving uh christmas yep. new year's with the family because that's like bowl season yep and in that time i would kind of be upset missing christmas yada yada but yeah. working then the money afterwards right. sense of accomplishment yeah absolutely and for me, it's always interesting what can get done. So what kind of my last couple of weeks of the year always look like? So I say I like to be done around the middle of the month. Done with my normal routine, if you will. Our business, while not as much as it was a couple of years ago, naturally slows down a little bit uh, this time of year. More of my staff are taking time off. More of my trainers are taking time off. So we have less dogs in the organization. Um, consumers are focused on other things. They're all hung over a little bit from, from Christmas being, you know, done. And so the, the leads and the inquiries historically slow down a little bit. And so I take advantage of that time, um, to do some stuff that maybe didn't do a great job of during the year. Um, really focus on the family without interruptions, our administrative team, everybody's working, but they don't have to be at the office. So they might be at the beach somewhere. They might be across the country. They're visiting a family somewhere else. Katie might be in the massage chair in the back of the office. Yep. She just walked by. She just left the massage chair. But like no one's going to be here at the office from, you know, Christmas, you know, till the first of the year. They're working, but I don't know where they are. And I don't care where they are. Go do your thing. We've got responsibilities, handle our responsibilities, but you know, enjoy time with your family and stuff like that. But these last couple of weeks, since it's, it, maybe it's not slower is the right word, but it's quieter, right? It's, it's quieter. I get a lot of planning done. Um, I get caught up on a lot of stuff just like in my mind, you know, with my goals. I, I have my goals for 2022, but I really tighten them up and I get really tactical with them over the next week or two. So when I come back on the third, when I come back when everybody is, is back in here on that Monday, like I am ready to execute. I'm not now then sitting down saying, Hey, what does 2022 look like, you know, for us? Because it's already 2022, right? We're, we're three days behind the ball. <laughs> you know, I'm ready to roll. And if you wait and put off your goal planning until January, you're, you're wasting that time. You're, you're losing it. You're not prepared to execute because you're planning. Oh, yeah. I mean, how many people make New Year's resolutions at 1159? Oh, gosh, all of them. Well, what, what's your resolution? I, I, I don't know. You know, I mean, go to the gym. I don't know. Right. That's everybody. Like, Let me just throw this in there. It's like, OK, um, you know, but be doing that now. Be strategic. Put your plans in place. And really, you should start thinking about this stuff in October, November. You know, spend the fourth quarter executing on your mission for the current year. But thinking about what, where do I want us to be in 2022? Because you can't just January doesn't show up and you start rolling, you know, as necessary. There's moves you got to be making now to be prepared to move forward the following year. Yeah, Does that make sense? yeah especially if you make that a priority because we plan for things that we prioritize. 100%. You know? 100%. And so, you know, it's, it, it's a big deal. So during this quiet time, this is when I'm really focused, dialing in. The real small parts, and we talked about on the show before, what are those daily tasks? What do those look like that are going to be necessary to hit the big goal? Because I'm really pleased with where we're at this year. I'm pleased. 
And I think that's something people should be thinking about this time of year also. How do you feel about how your year went? You know, are you pleased with it? Are you happy? Are you satisfied? I said I'm pleased. I did not say I'm satisfied. We've done a, a damn good job. The team has done a really, really, really good job this year across the board. I'm so proud of them. I've enjoyed so much visiting with the teams at the different locations the last several weeks and telling them face to face, proud of you. You killed it. You're doing so well. Keep doing what you're doing. You know, because that's what's getting us here is the things we're doing now is what has gotten us to this point. And so we need to get better while also doing those things. All right. Because you got to get better in order to achieve the goals that we have in place. And they, my team, they have to get clarity on what their individual goals are, right? And so if you're satisfied with this year, yeah, are you satisfied? Differentiating between are you satisfied with the year or are you satisfied with where you're at? If you're satisfied with where you're at, you're probably going to have a hard time setting goals for next year or whatever's next for you. If you're just satisfied with what you've accomplished, Cool. And there's a difference between those things. I'm pleased, not satisfied. I don't know when it comes to business that I'm ever satisfied. We set so many benchmarks this year. And we celebrate it in that moment. And typically, Katie gets frustrated because typically within five, 10 minutes, I roll out what that next step is. And we don't set easy goals just so we can be like, oh, we hit that mark. Check, pat on the back you're whatever, you're great, next. No, I already know what next is because I know that we're going to put in the work and put in the effort to hit some audacious goals and audacious benchmarks. And when we hit those, I have in my mind what next looks like. But I'm also able to quantify what those things can be because, again, we do the work during the year down to the day of knowing what we need to do. I know what is required. And so it's not easier to set goals, um, but it's easier to be realistic. Where there's goals that we set this year that we will not hit. Am I disappointed by that? Nope, not at all. The frustrate me, the ones that we're real close to, if we missed, I'd be frustrated for a minute. I'm like, damn, we could have done a couple things differently. But my frustration gets lost in the process of figuring out why we missed. I go from frustrated to problem solving. And then I'm going to set that next mark. You got to have that target. You got to have something to, to, to shoot for and drive for. Um, a lot of people will set goals and they will say, um, this is my goal. This is my stretch goal. I'm like, I hate that. And people I really love and respect say that. People have been on the show say that, some people. And I'm like, forget that. The stretch goal, that's your goal. That's your goal. Yeah. I mean, why, why are we going to pad the number to make it easier? Like, I know I need to lose weight. I need to lose a lot of weight. If I could ease my goal down to know what I'll lose just by drinking water only for the next three weeks. Well, good job. No, good job is in maintaining it, not doing this. Yeah. Right? I've not done a good job. A good job is sustaining. Yeah. And I mean, that's a part of creating goals, right? Like if you're satisfied with your year, maintaining isn't necessarily just like a neutral thing. Maintaining that yeah. is also another step. You 100%. Know? Yeah. And that's the difference between are you satisfied with what you've accomplished? Or are you satisfied with where you are? Yeah. Because I mean, that's another thing is that when you're talking about like more business goals, larger mm -hmm. goals, a part of that is also maintaining where you're at right now. Like that shouldn't be absolutely shrewd. Yeah, sure. But maintaining where I am, maintaining where we are right now, like in business, and I've got things with, with, with my marriage and with my family and my personal life. I don't. Holistically, I guess. Yes. I want to maintain where we're at, but I want the best version of that. 
and that will require us to leave there. Yeah. There's certain aspects of my life where I'm going to have to lose where I'm at. I'm going to have to go backwards a lot to propel me to where I want to be. There's things that I already know that I have to take away in 2022 to achieve things that I, w- I want. There are people in 2022, well, right now, this moment, and into 2022 that I have relationships with that I know that I won't probably by the end of 2022 because I can't maintain those relationships and get to where I want to be. I can't maintain those relationships and get the people that I want to take with me to certain places where we want to be. And sometimes it does require taking those steps back in order to propel yourself. Um, and you can't be afraid of that. Yeah. It's all taking the leap. Like we spoke about in an earlier mm-hmm. episode. Yeah. And you know, but you got to have clarity on what it is you want to do. And that's why that, that playing goal setting, I mean, people call it different things, you know, you know, the year in review and planning for the next, I don't care what you call it, but you've got to have uh clarity on what those goals are. And during this time where everything screams, Take a break. You've worked so hard. All these things. There's an opportunity for a lot of people out there to really make some moves. There's a lot of deals to still be done this year. We got several deals that we're still looking at that we're trying to close on before the end of the year. Um, There's meetings to be had. There's relationships. And, you know, for a lot of you guys, you know, there's people you're trying to connect with, you're trying to meet with and things like that. Right now, while everybody else is is taking a break from scheduling appointments and, and making those calls, make those calls. Send that email. Make that invite for your podcast. Get somebody in the studio. Get that meeting with that person that's been blowing you off, you know, for eight, nine months. Because now, now you're not as many calls are coming into them. Make sense, mm-hmm. All right? So you might have an easier chance at getting through. Take advantage of people taking that step back and put that hustle forward um, when everybody else is is relaxing. That's that's the biggest thing, and get that clarity, um, get that plan in place, so that you don't come into January hungover. Don't come into twenty twenty two slowing yourself down on things that you could have accomplished in twenty twenty one. Go into it with purpose and execution. Make sense? Yes, sir. All right. Get ready to press the gas. <laughs> Never let off of it. Never let off of it. Even, even when we're chilling, I'm still pumping that joker. It's always got to be to the floor. That's just how we roll. Devin's like, okay, here we go. It's just what it is. Just what it is. We got things to do. People to see, places to go, people to help, dogs to develop, relationships to be made, I mean, we're back. I turn around on the 5th. I'm in Dallas the first week. I'm back in Austin two weeks later, you know, for more meetings. Um, you know, I, I probably will avoid Wisconsin and Michigan until the spring. Um, but but Texas is, is, is the spot. When are we going to get out to Detroit for a sheep show? <laughs> I don't know. We need to talk to Katie about that and see. I mean, I'm sure she's got the... Um, Ca- the agri- agricultural calendar for 2022. Yeah, you know what probably. they call it? The sheep aren't going anywhere. I mean, she said the sheep shows her anytime she could get us on one. So maybe in the spring we'll get up there for for a show. But um, guys, that's just a message I want to share with you all today. Just, you know, take this time to get ahead. Um, of course, enjoy your family. And cor- of course, enjoy friends. Of course, you know, find some time to rest. But you probably don't need as much rest as you think that you do. All right. Take advantage of this time. If, if that's a benefit to, you know, your world, your business. I mean, if you've got paid vacation, there's no interest in growth and you're, you're listening and and you're just, you know, you don't have your own business. You're not doing your own thing. Yeah. Ignore all the crap I'm talking, talking about, you know, it may not relate to you, but most of our listeners, uh, this is stuff that, that they can apply in and put to work. So happy holidays, Merry Christmas. Um, you'll be listening to this, this Thursday. So when you're listening, we're going into Christmas this weekend and, um, 
you know, we just appreciate you so much here at the Big Dog Podcast. Um, we're going to probably take next week off, um, not have a show for you, and then we will hit you um, first week of January with a, a new episode, fresh new episode. Yep, it's Capricorn season, my season. We're ready. Same. Same. All right, guys. Merry Christmas. We love you. Um, have a happy new year, and we'll be kicking ass with you in 2022. Rudolph off the red nosed reindeer had a very shiny nose. And if you ever saw it, you would even see.